Okay, so if you're taking a high school geometry course, you've already taken geometry, you may have forgotten about this. And what we're talking about here is glide reflections. Now, glide reflections are a uh, part of the kind of category of translations or transformations. That's effectively how we can take one, um, take a point or a shape on a uh, XY plane or any plane for that matter and move it or map it to a different location. So for example, here I have a point P and then we're moving it to this new point, uh, P prime, and then we end up finally at this location, P double uh, primes. And this is an example of a glide reflection. So I'm just gonna do a quick review of this. And if you've never heard of glide reflections, uh, stick around because it's not that difficult to understand. But again, this is something that you certainly could encounter, um, especially you know, if you're in a geometry course or on a standardized uh, test like the SAT or ACT. So I wanna get to all of this in just one second, but first let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But uh, if you are frustrated currently right now in your math course, maybe you don't feel like you're getting enough instruction, or maybe you don't connect with the, uh, your teacher's teaching style, whatever the case is, I can help you out. I've been teaching math for decades. What I really try to do is focus on making math uh, clear and understandable. You know, sometimes when we read a textbook or we get kind of the technical definitions, uh, things just get too complicated and we don't have to uh, learn math in that manner. So again, I focus on really trying to make math clear and understandable. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level in terms of uh, mathematics, I can help you be successful in your math courses. Now, if you're um, preparing for any test that has a math section, so I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Accuplace, or Alex exam, CLEP exam, teacher certification exam, you get the idea. I can help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, you definitely got to check out my homeschool math program and curriculum. And uh, if you don't have any math notes, don't panic. Uh, I'm going to let you use my math notes. I'm going to leave links to my notes in the description of this video. But um, for this particular topic, you want to check out my geometry notes. Uh, but I'm here to tell you, uh, the secret to getting good, great math grades is taking great math notes. Okay, so start taking excellent notes, and you're going to see everything get better in your grades. Okay, so let's get into glide reflections. So my question to, uh, to you is, do you remember learning about glide reflections? Does this kind of like ring a bell with you? And if that's the case, um, you know, if you do remember this, put this in the comment section. If you don't remember learning this, also put that in the comment section. Be like, no, I don't think we cover this. But uh, well, anyways, you know, we'll, we're going to talk about uh, this in a second. This is um, the broader picture here is what we call translations or transformations. So things that you probably <clears throat> remember are like reflections. OK, like, hey, we can reflect things. We can do rotations. We can actually move things, uh, translate things. We're talking about mapping one uh, point or figure to a different uh, place. OK, now there's also something called dilations as well, which is per pretty interesting. And uh, so these trans uh, transformations or translations come in all kinds of different type of categories and glide reflections is one specific type. So let's kind of uh, go down here and real quick, just cover some basic vocabulary that um, you may uh, have seen, but I think it's important to uh, just review this. So a translation in geometry, effectively, and I'm giving you an informal definition here, is just we're moving the shape. Okay, we're taking, for example, let's say a triangle and we're going to move it over to another place. And this movement is called a mapping. Okay, so whatever point this is, let's call this A, B, C. We're going to map it over here to a new location, A, B, C. And this is a translation. Now, there's all sorts of types of translations we can have. Of course, we're going to be uh, talking about a glide reflection. But that's effectively what a translation or a transformation is. Now, we have a specific type of translation, and this one here is called a uh, isometry. Okay. Now, this is a fancy word, but basically means that we're going to um, take our figure and it maps to a congruent figure. In other words, um, the, we're going to have the exact same uh, shape and size. Right? Uh, so congruency is important. Unlike something called a dilation, let's take our little triangle here. 
if you're familiar with uh, um, geometry and dilations, basically when we're taking uh, our um, figure and we're going to zoom it in, we're going to have like a similar figure, not a congruent figure. So we can, again, we can have different type of translations or transformations that don't result in a congruent figure, but an isometry is uh, a congruent figure, and that means, or I'm bringing that up because glide reflections are an isometry, okay? In other words, uh, the final figure is going to be congruent. And we'll kind of like get the main idea here in a second, but let's just uh, first cover the essence of what a glide reflection is. So we have two words here, glide and reflection. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to do the glide part first. Okay, you're going to glide to one. You're going to start from one uh, your starting point, and you're going to glide uh, to a different location. Okay, so in this case, we'll start with this point P, and then we uh, we glide forward some amount to P prime, and then we are going to reflect. Okay, so it's like a two-stage deal. We're going to go. We're going to glide from here to here. And then we're going to reflect, okay, across an axis of symmetry. So that means that this distance is going to be the same as this distance, and we're going to end up right there, and that's actually P double prime. So we start with point P, we go to P prime, and then we end up with P double prime. So we're going to glide first, and then we're going to reflect second. And that's effectively what a glide reflection is. It's no more difficult than that. Now, of course, um, I'm using a real basic example here with just a point. But let's see if we can kind of pull this together. Let me give you an opportunity to see if you can figure out this basic glide reflection. Okay. So here is a triangle. Okay. And uh, we can give this uh, uh, coordinates here or give uh, vertices A, B, uh, C. So let's go ahead and uh, do a glide reflection on this particular triangle. So I want you to draw or sketch this out, put your little uh, glide of this triangle, okay, moving forward or moving in this direction, and then reflect that image and put your final image right there. Okay, so let's see if you can go ahead and do that. Now be careful on the reflection part because this is where a lot of students will make a mistake. All right, so if you want to go ahead and try this, go ahead and pause the video if you don't want to see um, the final answer, just one second. But uh, let's go ahead and glide this triangle forward so effectively, we're going to have our, I'm just sketching this right here. It's not a perfect little triangle. So if this is point A, B, C, here we would end up with point A prime, B prime, and C prime. So this is our glide, okay? And uh, when you do actually do glide reflections, you're, you're told, hey, glide, glide this and then reflect a, a, across a certain axis of symmetry. So I'm just kind of keeping it basic. All right, so let's talk about how this uh, image this new mapping would look. Okay, how would this uh, triangle, what would it end up looking like right here if it was reflected along this axis of symmetry right here? Okay, so just be careful. I don't, I'm not looking for a perfect uh, image. I'm looking for you, know, you to kind of just sketch out what you think the final uh, image is going to look like. Okay, now remember, uh, a glide reflection is an isometry, so this triangle is going to be congruent. In other words, same say, uh, same size and shape. But just because it's, uh, you know, we have this triangle right there, it could look, you know, this right, this triangle and this triangle are basically the same, same size and shape. It's just orientated differently. Okay. All right. So what does your reflection look like? Does it look like this? How many of you uh, say, well, okay, it's going to reflect down here, and I'll have my A double prime, my B double prime, and C double prime, and this is my final uh, image from my glide reflection. So if you answered this, unfortunately, I'm going to have to give you a sad face. That is not correct. This is a common mistake. We're talking about reflections here, reflections. So let's kind of review this, and uh, don't feel so bad. You know, uh, generally, I like to give happy faces, but no big deal. So let's talk about how um, we're going to um, reflect something. So this point A prime, what you do, the distance from this vertice down to the axis of symmetry, This is, we're going to go out the same distance in the opposite direction. So this is going to be A prime right there. Okay, A double prime, excuse me. Now B, okay, this point, we're going to reflect it. So it's going to be this distance and then the exact same distance on this side. So this would be B double prime. And now here is C. Okay, C prime, it goes all the way down here. Okay, 
of course, this is all perpendicular to this axis of symmetry. So C prime is way over here, C double prime, excuse me, right there. And when we kind of uh, remove all these lines, we can kind of see the image being formed. So this is the reflection, okay? This is the reflection. So you can see the mirror image would look like this, not like this, okay? So um, again, you practice this when you study uh, just reflections alone. Of course, we are doing a glide reflection, but this would be the final figure when this particular uh, glide reflection. And if you got this right, then let me go ahead and give you a nice happy face with a good old 1985 flat top haircut and an A+. As a matter of fact, I'll give you a few stars just to feel extra special uh, for being so awesome in math today. Now, if you forgot this, you're like, I think I remember learning this in geometry. I'm sure you did. Uh, it might have just been one, you know, slight, you know, maybe one day uh, you might have covered this because, you know, you cover a lot in the geometry course. But don't forget, there's all different sorts of translations and transformations you're going to have to be uh, familiar with. You're going to have to know how to uh, reflect things. You're going to know how to know to. You're going to have to know how to rotate things. You're going to have to know how to do dilations, et cetera, et cetera. So, if you really need help uh, with this kind of stuff, I would strongly suggest that you check out my geometry course in my math help program. I do have additional videos on this on my YouTube channel, but uh, really. I go heavy duty the, uh, on this in my geometry course. But anyways, that is a quick uh, introduction to glide reflections. And if this little video was helpful to some small uh, degree, go ahead and smash that like button. That's helpful to a big degree uh, to my YouTube channel. Now, uh, if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you consider subscribing. Been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus uh, math videos, basic math to calculus. So I do things from two plus two all the way up to uh, calculus and everything in between. So my goal is really to try to make math, uh, you know, non-mathy, you know, non-textbook-like. So many people hate math, and I get it. If you're not understanding or if it's confusing, then no one's going to like it. So my job is to get you to like math by trying to teach it in a clear and understandable way. So if you like my teaching style, please take advantage of all the videos that I've uh, posted and will post. But my best, best math help, excuse me, my best math help will always be within my math, within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.